What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we are here at the Nerdcastle with the next episode of Sunless Sea. In the previous episodes, we had died, but we had gotten to restart, I'd made some folly with making this character, but things are going reasonably well right now. I have managed to farm up about 3,000 echoes in between this episode and the last episode, and it only took me about 35 minutes, and I wanted to share the secret with you as we played the game today, and so I'm thinking that might be how we spend a little bit of time. We've got a port report that's going to take us up to the Chapel of Light, and so we're going to have to go up to the northern regions anyway, so we might as well murder some ice monsters while we're up and along the way. However, first things first, here at Hunter's Keep, I've been grinding down my terror before I started the episode. We got an event, though, and I didn't want you all to miss it, so let's go ahead and take a look. Let's see, it says, crunch across gravel up to the door. The brass of the door knocker is tarnished. The paint is beginning to peel in the salt Z air. No one answers, but the door is unlocked. It's a modest challenge for 61%. Let's go. The hall is dark. The parlor, too. There are signs of disturbance here and there. A smashed cup, an overturned piano, stool scratches on the walls. You bend to pick up a page of paper and hold it to the light. It's an unfinished poem. You think the handwriting may be Phoebe's. The absent moon, the gnawing hunger in the heart, the well, the sea, a great many crossings out. There are sounds from downstairs, from the kitchen. You push open the door cautiously and something clings to the ceiling. Something turns yellow eyes to you and hisses. We gained one terror. Something has changed in the Z. And we've got ten fragments. Okay, so do we keep going? Okay, so we can either... The Silent House, let's see here, we can loot it for jewelry. It's robbery, not salvage, but if you don't, someone else may. We can search the house with our mirrors, but our stats aren't very good right now. We have a 51% if we use our hearts. The yellow-eyed maid clings to the ceiling like a lizard, fierce and wiry in her ragged uniform. She hisses furiously. When you advance a step, she scurries away to the far end of the room, still on the ceiling, weeping. Let's 50-50 it. You try to question her. Those poor Zaylers, she spits. You realize that in all the time you spent at Hunter's Keep, she had never spoken. The poor Zaylers. I didn't come here for this. Damn them to the well. She's finished the meat. She turns to the ceiling in a single human bound. Inhuman bound. You lost supplies. You've gained 50 fragments. We succeeded in the Pages Challenge, and we've explored the Silent House on Hunter's Keep. So what happens if we do that again? Do we just lose more supply, and then something else happens? I'm not really sure what's going to happen if I do this multiple times. Catching her with a net might be a decent opportunity if we had better irons. We haven't upgraded those yet. With the money that we have on hand, I'm going to go back to London in just a moment. And we'll do it. Should we loot the house, or should we search it? I'm going to search it. Bedrooms, bathrooms, a breakfast room, the servant stairs, all empty of life. The long case clock at the top of the stairs ticks like a heart. Outside, the sea sighs. Later, you are certain that the fire began in the turret behind the house, but it spreads quickly. Zaylers tumble, choking from the door as smoke billows out. The yellow-eyed maid leaps from the window and streaks across the lawn on all fours. The death of Hunter's Keep. Flames lick about the gables. The spine of the house breaks with a roar as the roof falls in. Sparks fly up towards the false stars so far above. The death of the house takes hours, but it is but it is total. Only a cindered shell remains. We got a port report for Keep's End. We got an occurrence, Phoebe's fate, lost in a fire. We have a distant shore memory, and we gained one terror. And so all that terror that I took that time to get rid of, we've gotten a couple more of it back. Let's go ahead and launch out, and we're going to go back to London first because we do have things to do today, and we do have cash to spend. We got Dosh burning a hole in our pocket, and so I think we should probably make the best out of it. We're going to rebuy our house. I'm not going to monitor with the pirate over there. We are going to go fight some lifebergs, and I'm going to try and show you my secret anyways, or the secret that I've gleaned for making money. And lifebergs seem to be the most cost-effective way of doing it, even though it is a little bit boring. So from now on, we will be fighting all of the lifebergs that we come across, and I'm not going to grind them on camera, but off camera, whenever we need cash, I'm going to grind them like crazy, because you kill 15 or 20 of those things, and if you're not rich by that point, you've had really, really bad luck. I think I've killed about 15 so far, and that gave me about 3,000 echoes. It's, it's pretty sweet. It's really, really sweet. All right, so we're here in the shops. You can see here that I have 3,400 echoes. It's going to work out pretty well for us. I think we're going to rebuy our house, so let's go back. And I'm going to rebuy the elegant townhouse first so that we're all good there. We're back to where we started from. I'd also like to write my will while we have the money to do so. 
And so there it is, we have an ironclad will. The lawyer peers at you like a vulture composed of crocodiles. Come now, she creaks, there's a few years in you yet, but your caution does you credit. Sign here, no, no, ink is fine, this isn't the brass embassy. The brass embassy is where the devils come from, that's where all all of the minions of hell gather. I've been playing Fallen London, I've been learning the lore very, very slowly, so I'll do my best in the second season to kind of explain the lore behind things. In the brass embassy, whenever they make contracts, you have to sign in blood. Devils only let you sign in blood. And devils are always trying to steal souls from the Z. So basically, like, the devils are kind of neutral in this. Like, the denizens of hell are not, like, evil. But they come to the... They come to the... The Neath to convince people to sell their... Like, pieces of their soul. Like, percentages of their soul for money. And that's the business that they're in. And that's why you're seeing all these bottled souls around. Is because that's what the devils trade in. Okay. And so, we have... A whole bunch of interesting stuff here. And, oh, okay, so if we had the captivating treasure, we can pass it on. Okay, so I got a couple captivating treasures already by killing lifebergs, and they're worth a thousand echoes, and I guess this is a way that you can pass on money to the next individual that takes your ship and takes your name. Let's go ahead and upgrade stuff. I want to go to the Karo's Naval Surplus, and we need a forward deck gun, or we need a forward gun and a deck gun. And we've got the cash for it, so we might as well. So let's go. We're going to buy that. We're going to buy that. And then we'll go to our hold. And this one goes to the forward deck. So it goes right there. And then this one goes to the deck. And so now we're up to 58 irons. So we're looking a little bit better on the combat front. We're not looking amazingly well, but we're doing pretty well. I will also mention that I got a pewter horse head. But I got that event again where it's got the Kaganians fighting each other when I was sailing around. It's got the Kaganians and the Caledonians or something like that fighting each other. I got that again and I rolled it and I got a pewter horse head for winning it just while I was sailing around. I also got drowning pearls from the lifebergs. Which we can take over to the Canet and we could trade those in to make ourselves, I guess, more friendly with them. The other thing that I want to buy is I'd love to get myself a new engine. And so I'm thinking if we go to... Let's see here. Who's got a killer engine for me? We've got the elderly steeple engine. We can't afford the Cotterell and Hatheray, Athersage, Manticore. But we can do this one right here. I'm not even going to try and say that name. So I'll buy that for a thousand. That leaves us with a little bit of cash to reprovision. We'll go back up. We'll fight some lifebergs today. And I think that's going to be the course of the episode. I'm going to actually label this episode on YouTube to kind of be a tutorial for how to make money in the game. And this is the most effective way that i found. And believe me, I've been reading forums. I've been kind of watching other players. I've been seeing what people are doing. And this seems to be the best way to get this done. So let's go ahead and upgrade our engines. Okay, and so that gave us some more veils. The extra irons are going to be helpful. I did want to mention that. Oh, I should probably sell these at the shops too. Just get rid of them so they're not taking up space. So we'll get rid of that. And then the extra engine is either going to be... There it is. The elderly steeple engine. It's only worth 10 echoes. Poor bastard. He's not worth anything. Now the problem with farming lifebergs is that you do get random stuff that you can't really get rid of. For example, I had like 10 supplies drop off of one of them and it fills up your hold. So you may end up actually shooting flotsam off the deck. I mean, like these drowning pearls, for example, they take up cargo space, and that's cargo space that I can't get back until I get rid of those drowning pearls because you can't really buy them anywhere. I was taking a look around, and I've yet to find a place where I can sell them. I think I might be able to sell them. I don't know. The only thing that I have on my note sheet right now about pearls is that Khan likes them. And so I came back here and sold them. I did get parabola linen, and I got some crates of human souls, and some spider silk, and some honey, and some zoop. I got all kinds of stuff after killing lifebergs. So let's get going. Actually, we need to buy some fuel. I want to, It's going to be a little while while we're up there. It's a long run, so we might as well bulk up for the trip. Our supplies will... In fact, let's get rid of some of the supplies, because we can actually tangibly get those from the lifebergs. And so we don't need to carry quite as many, especially since as we're going up there, we can fight bats. And so if we get ourselves into trouble with supplies, we can just fight bats slightly down to the south. So what we want to do is if we take a look at our map, we want to go up to Sensor's Arch. And you want to park your boat, like, right here. And lifebergs will just continue to attack you over and over and over again. Like, they'll just respawn and instantly attack you every time that they see you. And that's a good thing. Now, they aren't too difficult to defeat, but there is a special strategy you have to employ. 
Now, Lifebergs cannot hurt you unless they're in close range with you, and I think the same strategy works for sharks. I'm pretty sure the big sharks, the I forget what they're called, the banded sharks or whatever that you get the hunting trophy from, I'm pretty sure that they function the exact same way in that they can only attack you when they're like under 40 yards. And so you can farm them in a similar way, although the treasures that you get are not quite as good. The Lifebergs give you really, really incredible treasures. Now, I would suggest that you upgrade your irons first. It's going to take you a long time to kill them if you don't upgrade your irons, and it's kind of a pain in the ass. I did it with about 30 irons when I first started up killing Lifebergs, and it takes a while. Like, each Lifeberg is going to take you maybe three minutes to kill like it takes a little bit of time like the combat is a little bit longer than what you'd be used to if you've played this game for an extended amount of time the lifebergs have the tendency to soak a lot of damage I mean it's a giant mass of ice and blood floating in the sea it you would assume that it could probably take some damage I'm gonna be taking the very very safe route around the edge of the bay right here on up to Carissa's point I forgot to turn in my port report but we'll get it on the way back now that we can no longer go to hunters keep to cheesy spam our terror down I'm thinking we want to be very, very careful about the way that we accumulate our terror. And so I'm going to try and stay 100% safe next to the side of shore as much as possible. If I, have to cross, if I have to cross the Z at any point and gain terror, I'm not going to take it lightly because we really don't have any way to get rid of it anymore without spending loads and loads of cash. Here at the Tomb Colony, I'm going to... We'll gather gossip. We'll also explore Vetterblight. And the Lamplighter's Arcade. Here they sell copper jewelry, grimacing little faces, and squat rectilinear figures. A tradition from before London, they claim. You're part, you part with a few small coins for a cheery-looking thing with an expression like a tipsy bat. Perhaps it'll bring you good dreams. We lost one tear. Okay, so that's good. That helps out. Let me check. They have visions of the surface. Recent news we can sell there and memories of distant shores. I'll probably sell the recent news just to get a little bit of extra cash. Because it's not really doing anything for us anyways. And then we will continue to head north again. Now, I'm going to park the ship. And my hope was that when I parked the ship, it would no longer cost me fuel. That's not the case. You still drain fuel even though you're just like floating in the ship and not really even doing anything. So, that's something you want to be aware of as well. I don't feel like my ship is any faster right now. Like, I feel like our engine power almost doubled. And I'm not feeling... I mean, we are outrun... I guess we're moving at the same speed of the... No, they're still outrunning us, I think. I'm not positive. I think we're going a little faster, but not exactly. We're not going as fast as the bats. So, for example, I know the bats are faster than we are. The bats are all over the place. They zip around. They're tiny. They're covered in fur. They have fangs. They're angry. And they are faster than us. Now they're only slightly faster than us from what I can tell. So what I like to do, and this may or may not work. This worked the last time I did it, and it worked the time before that as well. But what I like to do is you come up by Sensor's Arch, and you just park right out here. Now, they won't get too close to the surface. Like, they won't get too close to the arch, but if you park this just right, and you cut the engine, they may show up around here. Oop. That's going to give me terror. I don't see any of them spawning just yet. Let's go ahead and we'll go on up to Withers first. And what we'll do in Withers is we'll just kind of gather all the port reports and things that we need and we'll come back down. Sometimes when you go into port, it respawns things for you. Or if you really can't find any lifebergs, what you can do is you can just exit to menu and then rejoin the game after you park inside the port. And it'll respawn all the monsters. And if you really can't get them to respawn, that's the other option that you have in front of you. Crash right here. We'll go to Wither and we'll explore the town for a bit. And there's riddles, but we have really, really, really bad pages, and so I don't think we have much of a chance. Let's try it. Oh! One of the fishermen is bursting to try it. A cat's shadow. The fisherman grumbles but pays up. You gained one echo, and you gained ten fragments for a total of 253. That's all for now. We do also have gathering intelligence from the Chapel of Light, so we'll swing over there in just a little bit. The bruiser hasn't bothered us in a while, so I don't think he's actually going to be around. Let's go see if we can find some lifebergs. It's going to be very, very disappointing if we can't. I'll make a cut in the episode if they don't show up soon. And we'll see if we can get them to show up just for filming purposes. But this is really what you want to go for. And I'll probably put an annotation in on YouTube that just says, Go to this point if you want the actual strategy for hunting lifebergs. There's one. And so we're going to run this one down. And so there it is. It says, Those rifts in the lifeberg's surface, are they mouths? Lifebergs do not breathe. They kill from malice, not hunger. But they speak. Dear Christ, do they speak. Lifebergs can be destroyed, in theory. 
So what you want to do with lifebergs is you're just going to queue up a whole bunch of fleeing because they can't damage you under a certain range. They're a melee creature. And so what you really, really, really want to do is just hang out and run away from them. And they're going to try and close the gap with you the entire time, but your illumination doesn't matter for the course of this fight. As long as you can keep them outpaced, you should be good to go. Flea takes two to... Th actually takes four seconds less than him to gain distance on you, his seek ability. And so if you can get this up to 90, it actually goes really, really well. Now we've got wild salvos over here. Salvo, a flensing salvo. Needs harpoons. Okay, and I think the, fl oh, I don't want that. I want this, and I just lost a little bit of time right there because I wasn't paying attention, I was talking. It's the curse, it's the curse. I think we can go with a flensing attack here if we really wanted this. I've never tried a flensing attack, so let's go ahead and give it a go. We'll see how much it damages them. I've heard that flensing attacks actually really, really, really hurt these things. Oh, it's actually not going to let me. Not eligible? Why am I not eligible? Oh, I don't have enough illumination. I wasn't paying attention again. Okay, so I'm wasting my own time. How much illumination do I need for flensing? I need 50. Sorry about that. My strategy is weak right now. This is not the best tutorial on how to do this. We'll go ahead and we're going to give up some of this distance to get our illumination up to 50. And then it's back to gaining distance on him. And as you can see, this can be very tedious. Some people aren't going to mind this. What I do is I just put on like a movie or like a TV show on Netflix. And then I just sit here and let them come to me over and over and over again. And as they come along, I just kind of wipe them out one by one. Give myself, I think, two more fleas. Hopefully they don't bite. And if they do, we'll go ahead and open fire. But for now, I think that should be enough. And what we'll do is we'll open up with flensing salvos because I am interested to see how those affect Z monsters. I think they'll probably... He's got a lot of life, so it's going to take us a while to hurt him anyways. These don't cost us anything as far as I know. Let's see. Oh, wow. That did damage for sure. All right. Well, we might be able to take him out now. That worked great. Well, apparently flensing guns are basically the natural enemy of lifebergs. That's awesome. And so you go to What Remains and it says, What's this afloat on a new splintered foe? Something valuable, perhaps. Regardless, you have a tale to tell. And so you get a Z story. This is a very good way to accumulate Z stories, which you can also sell. Every time you kill one of these, you're guaranteed to get 10 echoes because you get a Z story. And then you open up the barrel. And we got three zoop. So on our first go right here, we just made 210 echoes off of our first kill, getting three zoop. And so this is a fantastic way to equip yourself for the future. And look, as you kill them, they just continue to respawn. And so there's no risk to yourself. You just sit in the light right here and you just wait for them to come to you over and over and over again. If you get really lucky, you'll get treasures and you'll get heirlooms. And if you get some of those, you can make thousands upon thousands upon thousands of echoes within 5-10 minutes. And I really do personally think that this is probably the best way to farm up some cash if you're trying to get yourself to the point where you can afford some of the ships. I mean, the ships are incredibly expensive in this game. I think 39000 is the most expensive ship. And if you're ever going to raise that kind of money, you're not going to do it by running around grabbing port reports. I think the person that I have talked to who's been running port reports testing that out for efficiency has said that he did a full run where he got every single port report, but it cost him about 15 fuel, and it cost him about 10 supplies or something like that, and grabbing everything, so that means that his expenditure was about 250. He said he made about 580 off all of the port reports, and that means that after expenses, you're looking at... You're not making nearly as much, you know what I mean? Like, it's almost not even worth it. Let's go ahead and illuminate him right now. I'm gonna light him up at 100 yards. Got a nice little football field's length in between us. A gridiron's length for those of you in Europe. To differentiate the terminology. We're still not at 50, damn it. I really need to work on my... I want to get my mirrors up a little bit higher. I think we can get him before he can actually close distance with us. So we'll go for two flensing attacks and we'll see if that works. I really prefer not to allow the lifebird to get inside of 50 yards with me. Because from there, if I mess up any of my abilities, I'm probably going to die. But that's a lot quicker. So my recommendation would be to get a flensing attack first. Go get a gun with a harpoon on it. And it'll make this go much quicker. Because the way that I was fighting them last night when I had 30 irons, I didn't have flensing attacks. And so I was just doing it with normal salvos. And it totally sucked. It took forever. This time, we got parabola linen. Very cool. Inside the lore parabola linen, there's this flax and stuff that grows by the rivers where, night, like where nightmares spawn. And you can only get it from there. And what they say about parabola linen is that it shimmers, but it looks dusty, like your windshield, basically. So it looks almost like if you could wipe it away, there would be something underneath it. But when you go to, like, brush it off, the colors just shift around with, with kind of that dusty appearance. 
And so right there, we've just made Parabola Linen, I think, sells for 60. So we're already up by 270. And that's if we don't try and take that Parabola Linen to places where it's profitable, where you can get like 120 for it. I mean, this is the money-making strategy. And so I do hope that this is helping you out. Instead, I think, oh, instead of sitting here, what I'm going to do is Lifebergs can spawn all over the place. We'll just fight every Lifeberg that we come across for the next five minutes or so. And I'm going to go to the Chapel of Light and see if I can get my port intelligence report done. If you have a job for the blind bruiser, you should also take care of that while you're out here. Just kind of make sure that your profits are maximized out because you are going to gain a little bit of terror from just kind of being out and about most of the time. And it's, it's well advised. It's the 27th. I don't know what our time is right now. So the Chapel of Lights, we're going to take some terror doing this either way. There's simply no chance that we're going to be able to cross this whole thing without gaining some terror. I'm going to try my best to minimize it, but it's okay. We have a cash flow now. And if you have a cash flow, it's usually not so bad gaining terror. Because you can basically just bribe your way out of it. Gain two terror from the crossing right there, so I suppose we can reasonably assume that we're going to gain two terror on the way back, assuming we don't gain one on this little stretch right here. I don't think we will, but we might. And it looks like we didn't have any more lifebergs. I think over here is where those eots things start to spawn, those moths. I haven't messed with those yet, but I am. I'm going to do some research on things first before I play them now, because in our second season, I want to make sure that if people are watching for expertise in the game, watch the second season where I've learned and learned from all my mistakes except for my misclicks and things. We go to the Chapel of Lights, and we'll eat of the Chapel's Bounty because that'll put our hunger back down. The Smiling Priest is the contact. Speak to him. I know nothing of the movements of fleets or cargoes or armies, he tells you, but your Admiralty will learn the names of those who came here and what they did. Let me whisper in your ear. You've gained a Tale of Terror. You get one fragment. You also gain some terror. And we get strategic information. And so we'll make a little bit of money, if we, indeed we ever needed it. Alright, let's head on back. The sea is as bright as milk. False stars above are black on a pitchy bed. Something is watching you. Its gaze enfolds from your boat. You're transparent as glass. Turn the helm and flee across the milk bright sea. Oh, 100% chance. Alright. And so we gained two terror, but we lost one nightmare strength. And so having high hearts is very, very nice. That's what I wanted to test out in this playthrough is I wanted to make sure. I think hearts is a really, really solid choice since terror is such a thing that you're just going to have to deal with in this game. Having high hearts really does seem to offset it because I think that terror is one of those things in this game that is unavoidable. You can't really get around it and hearts just gives you a natural resistance to it. If you can manage to get that, then you tend to be pretty well off with regards to... Oh, we got restless nights. Hold on. Let's go ahead and check it out. Let's go ahead and ignore them, and they'll just lose terror. We've had that event before. Essentially, we just went down below the deck, and all of our sailors were, like, shivering in terror. They were all sitting... They're not cold. I supply them with blankets. I swear to God, I give them all the things they need to be comfortable at sea. I'm not a cheap captain. We're wealthy. We kill a lot of lifebergs. That's what we do. We roll out on lifebergs. And while I'm here, I did want to thank all of you for joining me in Fallen London. I got a tremendous amount of both gifts and just people with friendly salutations through Fallen London, and it actually helped my character out quite a bit. If you haven't played Fallen London, I highly recommend it. My name is Splattercat on there. Be aware that I may not accept some of the activities you send to me because they don't fit inside of what I'm trying to do with my character. So, for example, if it affects me in high society, I probably won't take it. And so loitering on a street corner, that one I tend to avoid because it actually hurts my connected in high society, but definitely feel free to contact me on there. My name is Splattercat. I'm super simple to find. I'm not hard to track down in Fallen London. And thus far, I've actually only had to turn down one or two because they would negatively affect my character. But all the other ones, I've had a blast reading the little storylines, and they're actually really, really beneficial to your characters. Let's kill one more lifebird because we've got the time to do it, I think. Well, we're a little over time, but it's okay. We'll go ahead and I'll queue up. I think it takes about six fleeing before you can illuminate fully. I wish that our mirrors were a little higher. I think I can raise my mirrors with my first cat with my first officer so I may consider doing that let's go ahead and fill that back in we're at 70 yards already what I do how I wish the combat worked is that it reduces it reduced the casting time of all of these as you got more and more skill in that so for example this draws upon I think mirrors or maybe veils okay it's it improves upon veils and so if your veils were higher I don't know maybe it does work that way and I'm just ignorant of it but I wish that this one a little bit quicker. As I said, when you're doing these longer combats, I also wish that there was a button up here that you could click to make things go double speed. Pretty soon we should be all lined up. 
So we'll start doing some flaring right after this. And these flensing attacks are incredibly powerful. They don't really hurt the enemy's crew, but they seem to do a pretty... I'm sorry, they don't hurt the hull, but they seem to do a pretty good job against monsters. Right here, unless we crit with this one, which we did not. I think we can still kill him, though, before he closes the gap. So let's go ahead and let's risk it. I think we can make it. Okay, so we had a damage for 46 right there. Not bad. Ooh, he's got three health left. I'm going to let the less flensing attack go through because we are slightly ahead of his seek. And there it is. We've killed ourselves another lifeberg. What do you think? One more lifeberg? I'm thinking one more lifeberg. From that one, we lost all of our hunger. We found peaches, and so we got five supplies, and we lost two terror. That's actually really, really good. And so we've that's one of the worst events. I don't like to get supplies very often. However, if you do get a lot of supplies, you can take them all the way out to Port Palmerston, and you can get decent prices for them there. I tend to just throw them overboard and be like, meh. I mean, if I run out of space, they're going to be the last thing that I keep. We'll do one more lifeberg because I am having fun doing this. In the next episode, what I have planned is we'll probably go over to the Canaan. And we'll probably investigate what that little emblem does for us. If it allows us to get into the noble area of the Canaan, I think that that's going to be a good thing for us. We can make ourselves some powerful friends. The Kaganians did seem pleased that I helped them out in that combat where they were fighting. It was the Chelonians. That was the name of the people they were fighting. I don't know any of the lore about the Chelonians or the Kaganians yet. I think the Kaganians are basically just like sea mongols. That's what it comes down to. And so... I haven't gotten any information on the Chelonians, though. I have no idea who Chelonians are from Fallen London. I've been playing for about five days now. My character's leveled up pretty pretty reasonably. I'm in the mid-20s with all of my stats at this point because I've been really consistent about jumping on every, like, four and a half hours and doing my actions. I'm sure I'll start to fall off after a while and stop paying attention to it, but I could also... Actually, we could do emergency hull repairs while we're out here, too, because my hull is slightly damaged. I don't think that's such a bad idea. Maybe I'll do that because we do have the extra supplies... We're at 90 yards. Let's illuminate. And I'll probably mix in a repair here or there in between the flensing attacks. Yeah, that sounds about right. I turned the music off because I was listening to... We don't actually even need to do that. We can just go for the flensing attacks now. And this dude is doomed to the bottom of the sea with you, life bug. Everybody's so mean to lifebergs. There's something about an iceberg that bleeds that just nobody likes. It definitely pisses off the sharks. They feel lied to. What remains? An oilskin packet. We got an unread log. Well, of course it's unread. It's a giant piece of wood. An odd flat little stab-bound book bound with the red ribbon. The cover reads, Log of the... Did some lost captain purchase it in the far bazaars of the Canaan? Okay, so I've never gotten that item before, so I'll take a look inside my hold. I have no idea what that does. It doesn't take up hold space, though. So maybe we turned it into the museum. I'm not sure. No matter what, I am thinking that we're in good shape to go about, and I just wanted to show you that strategy in this episode. I'm not going to abuse it too heavily, except for, you know, when I come to breaks. I tend to batch record this game. And so, I'm going to record a few more episodes after this, and I may come back up here and fight more Lifebergs just in between episodes, but I don't think I'm going to farm them on camera any further if I can help it. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Sunless Sea. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next episode in this fantastic game designed by the developers of Fallen London. I really do think that this game has great things ahead of it. I think that it could be the spiritual successor to Sid Meier's Pirates. It's the only game that I've ever seen that's trying to do some of the same things. I think if they add shore events that are actually like little mini games that you play and things like that, I think that they have a very, very strong game on their hands. Even if they leave it in the same format as Fallen London is, where it's just a whole bunch of random events that you have a percentage to complete, it's still a really, really good game. Everybody I've passed this game off to has been like, wow. Like, they've been playing it nonstop on my Steam. So, I'll see you all later. Take care out there, everybody. And as always, hi do.